This video will show you how to set up Corel Draw to create a simple part to send to your universal laser. We'll start by opening a new document. Next, we'll set the size of the document to match the laser system we're using. In my case, I have a VLS 350, so my width will be 24 inches and my height will be 12 inches. Now we're going to install the universal color palette. We'll first get rid of any default color palettes by going to Window, Color Palette, and selecting None. Next, we'll go to Window, Color Palette, and select Open Palette. And I've put my universal color palette on my desktop, and I'll open it. Now we'll see the colors that the universal laser system can use open in the palette on the right-hand side. So we can only select from colors that the laser system understands. Next, I'm going to turn off color management by going to Tools, Color Management, and making sure color management is set to off. The next step would be to set the rulers so that they match the rulers on your cutting table. We'll double click on one of the rulers, and then we'll set the vertical to the height of your cutting table. In my case, that's 12. We also want to change the tick divisions to 10 to match the ticks on the cutting table. Now we'll change the default weight of our pen. We'll select our pen tool and select hairline. A window will open that will ask you to um, if you want to make this a default and we'll click OK. And I'll talk more about the reason for doing this later on. Now that we have our Corel Draw document set up, we want to save these settings as default. To do this, we're going to go up to Tools and Save Settings as Default. The part we're going to make today is just a simple luggage tag with my name in the middle. Um, so the first thing we want to do is select our rectangle tool and just drag a rectangle out anywhere. Um, then we're going to drag another rectangle out, make it slightly smaller, and we can adjust that later on as well if necessary. If I highlight both of them, then go up to Arrange, Align and Distribute, you'll see there's options to align the centers horizontally and align the centers vertically. And then you'll see the hotkeys that are next to them. I prefer to use the hotkeys because they're much quicker, uh, but you can access the command either way. So First, I'll align the centers horizontally. Um, then I'll use the hotkey to align them vertically. And now we have the smaller rectangle inside of the larger rectangle. If I want to give these rectangles a specific size, I can select the outside rectangle. And at the top, I can give it a width of, say, 3.5 inches and a height of 2 inches. Now the smaller rectangle. I'll make it 3.25 inches and the height will be 1.75. Next I'm going to put my name in the middle by selecting the text tool and then clicking once and now I can just start typing. And if I select it after I finish typing, I can just drag it to make it as large or as small as I would like. And if I hold shift down, it will kind of drag it from the center. That looks a little bit too big, so we'll make it a little bit smaller. Now, again, I can just center this by highlighting everything and pressing C and E. And... Uh, Otherwise, I could again go back up to Arrange, Align, and Distribute, and align it uh, using the menu. Um, the next thing we're going to do is put a circle. And this is going to be the hole in the luggage tag that you could run a string through. So I'll draw a circle towards the left side. And again, I'm going to actually define the size of the hole, 20.25 and 0.25. And I'll align the circle to the rectangle by first selecting the circle, holding shift, and selecting the outside rectangle, and pressing my hotkey for align the uh, 
centers? E. Um, the order in which you do this is actually important. Uh, if you take a look and see, uh, I'll move this back up a little bit, and uh, first select the outside rectangle, then hold shift and press the circle. Uh, now if I align them, the rectangle aligns to the circle. So you want to select the object that you want to move first. Uh, so I'll undo that. And so first, I'm going to select my circle, hold shift, outside rectangle, and E to move the circle um, to the center of the rectangle. Now they give this part a nice uh, rounded corner. I'll select my node selection tool and then select the outside rectangle and I can just drag and make the radius as large or as small as I'd like and just repeat that process with the interior rectangle as well to give it a radius. So I've got a nice rounded luggage tag. Now we need to define the colors in the document. Uh, the colors will tell the laser which process to use. And typically I do this as I go, but in this case I've saved it for the end for the sake of explaining them all at the same time. There are three typical processes you might want your laser to perform. Uh, the first would be to cut. So in this case we'll want to cut the outside shape of this luggage tag as well as the circle. Um, to tell the laser to cut, we'll define the shapes we want to cut out as a red um, hairline. So I'll select both the outside rectangle and hold shift and select the circle. And now I'll right click on red. Um, the next process would be to etch. So it's it's going to follow this line, but instead of applying full, full power to cut it out, it'll apply less power and just mark a line. Um, so I've selected the interior rectangle and I'm going to right click on blue. And the last process is raster. Um, so anything that is black will be filled and uh, filled in the sense that the laser will uh, run back and forth over anywhere there's black and um, fire the laser. So we'll see my name um, kind of fill on the part as the laser's running. It's important to note that you have to have your settings set correctly in order to get something to cut or etch. Um, all of the settings we worked with in the beginning of this video are very important in order to make uh, the cut process work properly. Um, the other thing to note is that your line thickness, which is up here, needs to be set to hairline. Now we changed the default to hairline when we selected the pen um, at the beginning of the video and selected hairline but if for some reason your line thickness is set to thicker than hairline even though it's red it won't actually cut the laser sees this thickness as something it needs to fill and it will raster it instead of cut so if you ever have a time where you print something to the laser and uh, it doesn't do the process that you expected you want to go back and just verify that your uh, line thickness is set to hairline. And to explain the differences between fill and stroke, I'll use my the text of my name as an example. So first I'll select the text, and then over on the right-hand side where the color palette is, I'm going to right-click on blue, and then I'll left-click on no color. So when I right-click, I change the color of the outline or the stroke. And when I left click, I change the color of the fill. So typically when you want to cut or etch, you don't want to have any fill, but you want to have your stroke set to either blue or red. And in the advanced driver, you can actually use some of these other colors here, but that's kind of uh, outside of the scope of this video. So we're going to, in this case, actually fill my name here. So I'm going to left click on black and I'm going to right click on no color to make sure that the stroke um, is invisible. Okay, now that we have our design complete, we're going to print this to the laser. So file and print. And we're going to select our printer as the VLS 350 laser or whichever laser system you have. And now we need to change a couple of settings in the uh, laser driver. So I'll click properties and this will open our laser driver 
Um, we're in the material database, which is nice because it, it uh, has a bunch of different common materials that people want to process on a laser system with all of the settings, the speed and the power settings uh, predefined by Universal. Uh, in our case, we're using cast acrylic, so I'll drill down from plastic and you can see all the different settings for acrylic. Um, so I'm using a cast acrylic and I'll just select the default cast acrylic. Um, the other selection we need to make, or uh, setting we need to change, I should say, is the material thickness. In my case, I'm using eighth inch acrylic, so I'll type in 0.125 and um, just hit the apply button. And that will change some of the settings for me so it knows how much power to apply to cut through eighth inch acrylic. For more advanced users, you can go into the manual control to change some of the power and speed settings directly for each color. And you'll notice the manual control gives you more color options um, as opposed to the material database that only allows you to set black, blue, and red. And you can see raster, vector engraving, and vector cutting for those three colors as we discussed earlier. In our case, we'll stick with the material database because we're using one of the materials that's defined in there. Um, and I'll click OK and then print to send this file to the laser. When we send the file to the laser, the laser doesn't start right away. It actually sends it to the uh, universal control panel. Um, and to access that, we're going to go down to the system tray. And if you're using Windows 7, typically it'll be in this uh, little menu here. We'll find this red icon that says universal laser system control panel, and we'll click on it and that will open up the control panel and you can see my file is in the exact position in the control panel as it is in Corel. Now it's a good idea to just verify that the colors um, in the control panel match the colors in Corel. So for instance if the outline here is not red but I made it red in Corel we know we have a problem with the uh, either the line thickness or the color setting. Um, so if it shows up black, but in Corel it's red, you want to go double check that because it's not going to cut the way you expect or, or uh, vector engrave the way you expect if it's not the color uh, you selected in Corel. In our case, the colors are displaying correctly. The next steps are to turn the laser system on, install the cutting table, focus the cutting table, and relocate the part to the area where we want it to start. When you turn the system on, it should immediately home itself. The system will only turn on if it is connected to a computer via USB that has the universal driver installed on it. If you own a desktop unit such as this VLS350, your engraving table will be removed, then your cutting table will be installed. The cutting tables in the platform systems are installed on top of the engraving table. Refer to your user's guide for full instructions. After your cutting table is installed, place your focus tool in the system. Now in the driver, click the focus view button on the right hand side, then select the location somewhere near the middle of the table. This will move the carriage to the middle of the table. Now move the table up until you can touch the top of the focus tool to the front of the lens carriage. Once you have the top of the focus tool flush against the front of the carriage, press the up button on the system to move the table up until the lens carriage hits the notch of the focus tool and bumps it forward. Adjust the height of the table until the edge of the carriage fits perfectly into the corner of the notch. Now back in the driver, select the system tab, then click the calibrate button under the cutting table heading. The new window will show how far away the current table position is from the value currently saved in the driver as the calibrated position. We will click the Save button to overwrite the Save Calibrated Position with the current table position. Click Yes to confirm the selection. Now, if we reopen the calibration window, the Z position should be zero, indicating that our current table position is the calibrated position. You will also want to confirm that Auto Z is enabled. This setting tells the table to drop by the thickness we entered earlier while in the material database. If this checkbox is not checked, the method we just used to focus the table will not work. I can now load the material into the system. In my case, I have numerous parts already cut out of the material I'm using. 
I want to make sure I avoid the holes in the material when I cut the part. To do this, we will use the Focus tool in the Viewer tab. Select an area of the table that looks like it has a section of unused material large enough for your part. When you make the selection, the lens carriage should move to that position in the system. If you have the top door open, you should see a red dot on your material. Continue to make selections until you successfully move the red dot to your desired position. Back in the control panel, select the Relocate tool. You will see a series of points appear around your part. Select the point you would like to move to the position of the red dot in the system. In my case, I want the top left corner to move to the red dot position, but you can select any point you'd like. The selected point will appear blue. Now click the Two Pointer button to relocate the selected point to the position of the red dot pointer. Next, we want to double check that this part will fit in the selected area. To do this, make sure the Focus View tool is selected, then click on the extremes of the part. With the door open, you should see the red dot move to those positions. If the red dot runs through any holes in the material on its way to the selected positions, you may want to consider changing the location of your part. Now turn your extraction system on. Proper extraction is critical. If you do not have an adequate extraction system, you should not use your laser system. Contact your reseller if you have any questions about your system's extraction requirements. We are now ready to start the part. Click the green button to start. While the part is running, you will see a real-time status of the progress in the control panel. For safety purposes, you should never leave your laser system running unattended. After the part finishes, leave the top door closed for a few seconds to allow for the extraction system to clear any remaining fumes. Then remove the part and enjoy.